Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. We're going live tonight and we're going to talk some more. Whoops, very loud. We're going to talk some more about vitamin D and some of the interesting research that just came out. And I hope uh, you guys are doing well. I d I'll just review what happened today. And then let me just shut off this Do Not Disturb. Anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. This is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Um, the title of today's talk is Vitamin D Defends You, and essentially how the mainstream media is in fact being forced to acknowledge uh, the power of vitamin D. If you know, a few day, um, days ago I talked about what's going on with vitamin C and the fact that an ER doctor was saved um, by high dosage vitamin C. This was just about four or five days ago. You know, it's very interesting. Um, I've been doing this content to really educate people, and sometimes uh, you find that uh, copying is the best form of uh, adulation. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to see uh, a lot of different people starting to take this, discuss it, and including the mainstream media is being forced to acknowledge about vitamin C and vitamin D. So I, I want to today talk about vitamin D because uh, today was an extremely beautiful day. Uh, we had a wonderful day. We went over to Minuteman National Park. I gave a speech. You know, they limit the number of people that can come out, but about 40, 50 people came out. It was, it was quite nice. I, we just put out the notice literally two hours before, but it was an amazing, you know, spring day or the beginning of spring day, a uh, lot of sun. And we have to understand the sun is one of the most healing things for all of us, even if you get uh, 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, obviously, if you're a little bit darker in skin color, you need a little more because of the uh, fact that the UVB radi radiation takes a little more to penetrate. But nonetheless, vitamin D is extraordinary for the human body. It's an extraordinary antimicrobial. So what I want to share today is just quickly review, for those of you who may have missed it, how vitamin D defends you. And then I want to show you a, a study that just came out about four or five days ago, done in Ireland, uh, April 2020 about uh, I think five or six days ago, which further proves in what's called the longitudinal study, the power of vitamin D to have significant effects in lowering respiratory infections, which is what we're talking about here, whether it's coronavirus or whether it's any kind of other kind of virus uh, in terms of the flu season that comes out, especially when it hits the lung epithelial on the power of vitamin D. So I hope um, you're gonna enjoy this because you're gonna learn a little bit of um, of chemistry, a little bit of systems biology, and then we're going to cover this report, and then we're going to show you, in fact, what the New York Times is now acknowledging, what I had put out there uh, over four uh, weeks ago, four or five weeks ago. So that's good, and I think the mainstream media is doing this because as the content I'm sharing goes broadly, goes globally, um, all of you gut instinctually, you know something's wrong with this whole, you know, fear-mongering scam, and as a science uh, that I'm, uh, you know, sharing uh, gives you that confidence to connect that your gut instincts were right. The mainstream media now to save face has to acknowledge the content that I've been sharing. So you'll see what the New York Times is saying and also these reports. So let's just sort of jump into this, if I may. Um, if you recall, uh, several weeks ago, I shared a very interesting set of uh, slides, which really talked about how vitamin D, D destroys for you a molecular systems understanding. Now, just to make this very clear, you know, vitamin C is extremely well researched. As you see here, nearly 84,378 papers have been published in PubMed, 1,000 plus systematic reviews, nine systematic reviews on acute respiratory infections. And just to be clear in science, what a systematic review is, um, in a field uh, where you have lots of people doing research, 80,000 papers, sometimes you'll take a block of those papers and you'll curate those papers, which means organize them and summarize them. That's a systematic review. The reason a systematic review is valuable is it helps you and it actually makes it more efficient. Instead of you having to read the thousands of papers, someone organizes together. So in the case of uh, vitamin D, as you can see, there's been a number of systematic reviews been done, about a thousand, but in particular, nine systematic reviews on acute respiratory infection. And remember, what we're dealing with here with COVID, coronavirus, or whether it was SARS or MERS, but you're typically looking at serious respiratory infection in the, um, 
you know, in, 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 in obviously the lung area. So this is important that nearly nine uh, systematic reviews were done. The latest one that I reviewed last time was in 2017. Today, I'm going to review some, something that just took place in 2019, uh, follow up with that, and something that just took place this month. But in the 2017 one, if you, if you remember, it was 24 institutions, 12 countries, 11,000 plus participants. And to jo those of you, uh, you joining uh, up in Instagram, I'm posting this on YouTube. It's going live as well as on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. So you can actually see the study I'm sharing on vitamin D. And this is what the 2017 test concluded, which they included 11,000 plus participants. Vitamin D supplementation was safe, protected against acute respiratory tract infection, survival, really increased survival in ICU patients, and greatest benefit was to those that were deficient. And there were multiple mechanisms of action to promote the effect of antimicrobial peptides. So um, I want all of you to, if you wanna sort of um, show off to your MD friends, you can call them C-AMPS or AMPS, A-M-P-S, antimicrobial peptides, antimicrobial peptides. So when you consume vitamin D or it's created from the UVB radiation, your, your body actually creates these antimicrobial peptides. So think about the name, antimicrobial, which means it takes on microbes, be it fungi, be it uh, uh, you know, viruses, be it bacteria, uh, be it um, you know, different types of pathogens that come into you, particularly uh, the ones that I just mentioned, antimicrobial peptides. So let's walk through that. Um, and what I'm gonna walk you through is you're gonna actually see how this works. So um, by the way, um, there are many aspects of our immune system, but two of them here are the innate immune system and the adaptive. The innate immune system is all those parts of the immune system that you're first exposed to when you, uh, you know, someone sneezes on you're exposed to a pathogen. It's your stuff in your eyes, your, your respiratory, your ears, your, um, you know, your nose, your mucous membranes. This is where the virus first interacts with you. And as you can see here in the respiratory, uh, in the innate immune system, that's called the innate immune system, you have macrophages, natural killer cells, neutrophils, dendritic cells, uh, eosinophils, and basophils. And then there's a couple which sort of hug both the T cells and as well as the natural killer cells. So this is your innate immune system. We're gonna really focus on the macrophages today. And then your adaptive immune system is your B cells, the antibodies, your T cell, which generate your CD4s and your CD8s. Um, and the reason that, that this is important is that your innate immune system is what takes on the virus first, when it first seizes it, and then your adaptive comes in later, which are the sharpshooters, which, which produce antibodies for it. But in the innate in immune system is where we're gonna focus on today and where vitamin D has amazing influence in creating antimicrobial activity. So here we go. So if you see here, um, what we see right here is you know, here's your nasal cavity. So, you know, someone sneezes on you or, you know, or you breathe in these, these virus particles. Well, it goes down your trachea, you know, and it can end up in your lungs. And if you look in, in your lungs, there are these amazing little um, uh, organelles or, 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 or uh, structures called the alveoli. And the alveoli are these little sort of balloon structures. And this is literally where air exchange take place to support fresh uh, oxygenation of your blood. So the blood here is flowing through the capillary and here's the endothelial here and then there's an exchange that takes place with, within your epithelial cells in the lungs and the air coming in which is in red here which brings in oxygen so here is unoxygenated uh, capillaries uh, I mean blood vessels and they're being oxygenated at the same time CO2 is going into your alveoli and which has been taken out so you breathe in you're getting uh, CO2, you breathe out, this goes out. Breathe in, breathe out, okay? So that's what's happening there. And if you go look closer here, when a virus, you know, like this coronavirus or any other virus for that matter, comes into your lungs, what actually happens? Well, the key thing is um, when those viruses come in to your lungs, your body, the innate immune system, because you have all these mucous membranes and then the epithelial, tries to first protect your lungs from that attack. Um, and the way that it does that is through this process of protection of the airway epithelium from pathogens. And the epithelial cells really form the 
physical barrier against the pathogens. Your airway epithelium actively contributes to the innate immunity. Now in macrophages, secretion of antimicrobial peptides, those AMPs takes place, and the catholicidin AMPs, so remember that word catholicidin, are critical to antimicrobial activity, and vitamin C is essential to these catholicidin AMPs. So you have antimicrobial protein, peptides, catholicidin antimicrobial peptides, a class of uh, antimicrobial peptides, are critical um, uh, to go fight microbes, but you can't produce them without vitamin D. So simply put, the catholicidins are what are created by vitamin D. And we're gonna walk you through that. So here, what we can see is that as we go through this, here we're looking at one of those alveoli again. This is what we call the epithelium, okay? And you have all this mucus, uh, uh, mucus here. And when the, when the air comes in or when the virus comes in, those are these little particles down here to the left of TNF and IL-6, and these blue structures are your macrophages, okay? When the virus comes in, your macrophages interact with the virus attempting to take it out. So the macrophages interact with the virus, and let's zoom in a little bit. By the way, there's two types of macrophages, pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. For antiviral activity, as you can see here, you need the pro-inflammatory. So the pro-inflammatory are the ones that are involved in antiviral activity. And by the way, this is a great paper which talks about the role of vitamin D supplementation in TB and HIV. And the reason I bring this up is people just thought this antimicrobial activity is just bacteria, but it's not. It's bacteria as well as viruses. Now you can get vitamin D from you know uh, milk, but one of the best sources is from the sun or from salmon and eggs and these kinds of things, which is vitamin D3. So D3 is what we're really talking about is one of the most important for you to consume to support immune health. And as D3 goes near your liver, it's processed and then it's broken down into versions of vitamin three that your body actually uses. So here, what you're seeing right here is the vitamin, um, uh, is that it? Yeah, so here you're, the red is in this case, we're looking at TB, a bacterium. Alternatively, you could also look at a virus. As it comes in, there's a process that takes place here, which you're gonna follow very carefully, uh, that vitamin D is involved in the upregulation of these catholicidins. So let's go a little more, uh, um, a little more in detail. These catholicidin and antimicrobial peptides, CAMPs, antimicrobial peptides, as, I, as I've said, is are the oldest mechanism of action uh, towards microbial pathogens. And they're conserved across evolution, across several species, and they involve pathogen cell wall mem membrane disruption of bacteria and viruses. So just to put, these catholicidins these antimicrobial peptides have existed for many, many billions of years. It, um, and they're evolutionarily conserved, which means they occur in many, many different species, which is also important to remember. So they're a very powerful weapon across species. And what these catholicidins do, think of them like uh, bullets. They literally go break up the cell wall or the walls or the membranes of bacteria and viruses. So when you take vitamin D, you create these catholicidins and they literally go disrupt the cell walls of those bacteria and viruses. That's why they're important, antimicrobial peptides. And remember, I talked about this about uh, over a month ago. So let's walk you through what happens here. How does this happen? You know, these are sort of these, these are called molecular pathway diagrams. You know, I spend probably in a day, I'll probably review hundreds of thousands of papers where I'll be looking at lots and lots of these diagrams. So it starts giving me sort of a systems understanding. So here is, just think of, this is vitamin D3 in your blood. This thing, the structure that we're looking at here, this little edge here and the gray structure, this is actually your macrophage. This is where all the activity, this is your cells. The, those are your cells that are involved in grabbing that virus, bringing it in and trying to take it out, right? So they bring in the virus and then they, take it out and this is how that process actually works. So you get vitamin D, vitamin D goes through a, a series of chemical reactions here. By the way, this darker structure here is your nucleus. So when vitamin D comes in, it literally um, uh, creates a series of reactions that re create what are called vitamin D receptors on the cell surface, vitamin D receptors. Those vitamin D receptors 
connect with the vitamin D, and then through another series of processes involving your genetics, it upregulates these little CM, these little dots right here that you see, these little circles. These, uh, these proteins, these catholicidin antimicrobial peptides, are involved in capturing the virus. So now we're looking at HIV here, a virus. They're involved in bringing the virus in, you know, basically build, capturing it, and then over here, destroying it, right? So the catholicidins are involved in many processes, capturing the HIV, like basically throwing a net around it, the virus, and then once it's captured, blowing it up, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll walk you through that. So um, this is another example of the same thing, vitamin D coming in, the catholicidins, this is grabbing the tuberculosis bacteria, and same thing, disrupting it. The reason I wanted to share both of them is vitamin D is important for capturing the virus as well as for capturing different kinds of bacteria um, in terms of the catholicidins, the, the vitamin D process with catholicidins. So here, um, uh, this is a wonderful paper that uh, came out recently. You can see in March of 2019, it's very, very new stuff. So uh, when I'm doing a lot of research, I'm not only looking at old stuff, but I try to keep up to date even on the order of months. This is why most of the people in the mainstream media are behind. Um, a lot of the grifters you see talking on the internet who frankly, unfortunately, watch which way the wind blows. You know, should I be hyping up uh, COVID-19 or should I be going the other way and attacking Fauci? They sort of confuse the discourse because um, unfortunately, um, they don't go to the latest science. And this is the latest science that we're looking at here. So what you see here is this says catholicidins, PAMP 36, LL37 and CATH2 are similar peptides with different modes. What are they saying here? There are different kinds of catholicidins, right? Catholicidins are those things that are created by vitamin D to take out the bacteria and the viruses. So in pigs, you have what's called PMAP38. In humans, the one that they've mapped is LL37, which we'll focus on, and CATH2 are the ones in chicken. So these catholicidins, as we said, are conserved evolutionary-wise. They show up in chickens, they show up in pigs, and they also show up in us. You know, chickens are, you know, birds, and they show up in mammals, including us and pigs. So that's one of the important things. They show up in a number of different species. And what this paper was extraordinarily good at was, look what it says here. Uh, for those of you, again, seeing on Instagram, you can see this. It says, almost all catholicidins show up in simple media, direct direct antimicrobial activity against many different bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. So that's important. It's not just bacteria, it's not just viruses, but fungi as well as parasites. Really, really important uh, for immune health. Extremely important. So here, I wanna just show you chemically, you know, this is what they look like structurally. This is sort of the protein structure, a little bit longer of the uh, pig catholicidin. This is of the of the chicken, CATH2, and this is a human, right? Here, there's a human one, LL37. And what you can see here is um, as you increase the amount of concentration of these peptides, look what happens. You have more killing activity, more concentration, the amount of bacteria uh, drop in concentration. So increase the amount of catholicidins and you reduce, and that's true across pigs, it's true across chickens, as well as humans, LL37. And how does these catholicidins work? And this is pretty cool because what these, what happens is when you get vitamin D, your body creates these catholicidins. So you need the vitamin D3. Your body makes these catholicidins and they literally go around the surface of those bacteria. They go around the surface, which is the membranes, and they literally sort of eat away at them, fire, what I call fire bullets at them and break up the membrane. Very, very important. And why is that important? Because as virus are coming in, you wanna destroy them before they start replicating, before they start using your cellular machinery to destroy your body. So that's what we're noticing here. We see the human catholicidin peptide, LL37, and then we're gonna zoom in on the bacteria here. Same thing occurs with viruses. Those are those little red structures, you see? They surround the cell membrane, the cell wall, uh, uh, and they literally create like a carpet-like action, and then they start breaking up the cell membrane, and then you have the leakage of the intercellular contents. Basically, you've blown it up, okay? That's what happens here. We've literally blown up, the, and here's another example of it. Same here, here's a bacterial wall. 
it, it attaches here, and then you blow up the bacteria. What I wanna share with you now is this is literally looking through a microscope, and we're gonna show you an example where you have, in the case of a bacteria, uh, you know, in the case where it's normal, and then in the case where the cathelicidins have hit it, and you'll see how it starts perforating the bacterial world. So this is literally, it's not just cartoon diagrams, it's the actual effect here. So by the way, here's control. So if you notice on the left side here, these are the bacteria well formed, their walls are nice. This is in pigs, you can see they're starting to get destroyed. This is in calf two, in chicken, and this is in us. And just zooming on, in on it, you can see it here. So nice, beautiful bacterial walls, nothing has happened to them. And now this is with the LL37 catholicids. You can see it's all fuzzy around here and same here. So, the, so what we're really looking at here is that the catholicidins, we're looking at particularly the human catholicidins, which is what gets produced when we take vitamin D, blow up or, or disrupt uh, the, the walls of the bacteria or the virus. That's what's extraordinary about this. It's really pretty amazing. So in closing, vitamin D deficiency leads to weakened immune systems. It's essential to create these catholicidin antimicrobial proteins the best source is sunlight. Like we went out today, we were all out there. You know, dietary supplements, the D3, fatty fish, salmon, sardines, the cod liver oil. And just to give you an idea, the market size is not like the vaccine or, uh, or the pharmaceutical market side, billions of dollars. This is very, very cheap stuff, about $1.7 billion, and the annual growth rate is 2.3%. So as I've been sharing, we really need to understand why does Fauci, why does Bill Gates, why do all these people, why does Twitter, why does Facebook censor people when they say vitamin D has antimicrobial activities? That is, uh, it, that it has activities to support the respiratory infections, which means take them out. I did a tweet, they put me in Twitter jail, never happened to me, unbelievable. So some call center rep somewhere because of the diktats of Mark Zuckerberg is telling an MIT PhD in biological engineering, you know, an expert in the immune system, that putting this kind of truth out is should be censored. It's quite uh, unfortunate. What I have to share with you though today is because of the videos that we've been doing, um, there's a new study that just came out in a good way, uh, in a very timely way to what I've been sharing, but also the New York Times is being forced to admit um, I, I, you know, the New York Times always does this to save face. They need to keep their readership because the readership starts saying, hey, how come New York Times, you aren't uh, talking about the facts that I just heard from Dr. Shiva, you know, as an MIT PhD. So in order to save face, they'll be, they're, they, they're forced to tell the truth, but they're not truthful organizations. They do it so they can keep you buying their newspaper. But here what we're seeing is uh, there's literally an increase in the growth of vaccines, right? You have global vaccine market of 60 billion. They're doubling every six years. And, they're, and their driver of the growth is increase in infectious diseases. And they're projected to get about $120 billion. Very small. So this is a fraction of the market. So it's not like people are making a lot of money selling vitamin D. However, it's very, very valuable for our health. This is why Big Pharma doesn't want to talk about vitamin D. Just again, look at the different in market share here. 1.7 billion by 2025 vaccines 120 billion by 2025 so you're looking about a hundred x more right is that about 100 x yeah about a hundred times more one billion dollars in market size one you know 1.5 million for uh, vitamin d but 150 120 to 150 billion a hundred times more okay that's why they don't want us to talk about vitamin d that's why fauci is not talking about vitamin d because his masters are not going to support him. He does, He won't get to go to their nice parties. He won't get to have his job. That's how he's been able to survive for over six presidents because he's literally a front man for big pharma. Not one word has he said about vitamin D. But let's go over here and look at this study here. Let me switch here. So as I mentioned, a recent study came out and, um, and let's go over to it here. Let me bring it over here. And what you see here, let me go to my... Uh, so this paper just came out and you'll see this this was done in a very nice paper done in ireland okay and it says vitamin d deficiency in ireland implications of covid19 so this is done for covid19 results from the irish longitudinal study of aging t-i-l-s-a okay 
but they did it the D with, with longitudinal tilde. So what you have here is, um, it's a very interesting study, and you can get it if you notice the date here is April 2020. So this is literally hot off the press, and it's done relative to COVID-19. And um, a couple of things that these the individuals point out in the early part of our paper, the part of the paper which I'll go through, I just finished reading it so I can summarize the key elements here. The early part of the paper, what they've done is they, first of all, they acknowledge that right here, they look at previous studies. They said recently a large meta-analysis uh, of 10,933 people from 28, uh, 25 trials conducted in 15 countries investigated whether taking vitamin D supplement help to prevent colds, flu, and chest infections, chest infections, acute respiratory infections, ARIs. Vitamin D had a significant protective effect when it was given daily or weekly to protect with lowest vitamin D levels. The risk of having at least one ARI was reduced 60% to 32% in these people. This is why in the letter I wrote to President Trump, we should have gotten people back you know, healthy people supplement with vitamin D because you're reducing their chance of getting those respiratory infections by 30%, you know, 28% if you want to be exact. That's huge, 30% reduction. And that's why, and this was, the, the what I recommended to the president was around 5,000 to 10,000 uh, for adults and about 1,000 to 2,000 for young people. In their study, they're recommending around two to 5,000. But the point is, here's a study that is reviewing a study that was done, which is one I reviewed earlier, that has 60 to 32% reduction, massive. And yet, Fauci, and no one talks about this, does not want to talk about this. And this other one said, overall vitamin D supplements reduce the risk of having at least one, I'm sorry, 60% to 30%. Now, another study in 2019 said a newer analysis using 21,000 participants from across eight studies showed that those with low vitamin D levels had a 64 increased chance of community acquired pneumonia, 64 increased chance. And remember, this is not a small group, 20,000 participants. It's not cherry picking. So again, this evidence is not talked about by Fauci or BRICS or the CDC or the WHO in terms of what you can do to support people right now. Now let me go to the end of this article here. Go back to this. And this was the conclusions of their paper. It's quite extraordinary. It's a great paper. If you have time to read it, uh, you can get it online. But this paper, at the end of it, uh, this is what they concluded, okay? This is a conclusion, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So here is their real conclusion, what they uh, took away from this, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I think it's right. Yeah, it's right here, okay. Here's a lung, so look what they're saying here. Vitamin D status by obesity and respiratory lung conditions. Remember, one of the important things is people have obesity and pre-existing conditions, diabetes. These were one of the people that were high, had a high proclivity for getting, um, you know, getting the inf in infection. So, but overall, it's um, you can see there is a massive reduction. This, for example, here, for instance, in those age 55 years. Oops, let me go back, back here. Those age 55 years or more, the prevalence of inter deficiency was 38% in those with lung conditions versus 28%. Similar trends were observed in 70 plus age groups where rates were 32 versus 29% in winter and 16%, nearly half. And then in the conclusion parts of this, um, what they uh, particularly conclude here, let me go to that section here to find it here. Um, here's the main conclusion. So if you, uh, if you look right here, there's a, uh, they talk about a variety of sources that you can get vitamin D. A, a number of sources that we can get vitamin D from, including fish, you know, the fatty fish, etc. cetera. Um, but the report demonstrates, this is the key thing, that of particular concern is that nearly 30% of those age 70 plus and 40% of those 80, 80, 85 plus are deficient in vitamin D. So just think about that. That's the deficiency level, 30% age over 70, 70 plus and 47% over 85 plus. And remember, these were the age groups that have been significantly being affected by uh, COVID and coronavirus. And by the way, coronavirus, as we talked about, is a virus that's quite common, but this is a no novel coronavirus that they're talking about. 
So the bottom line is that people are very, very deficient with vitamin D in these groups. And it says this of key importance given the usefulness of vitamin D for immune function, particularly at this time. Of particular concern, we have observed very high levels of vitamin D deficiency in those who are obese and those with pre-existing lung conditions, of which we have been observed to make individuals particularly vulnerable to COVID-19. Let me repeat that again. Of particular concern, we have observed very high levels of vitamin D deficiency in those who are obese and those with pre-existing lung conditions, both of which have been observed to make individuals particularly vulnerable to COVID-19 and complications from the virus. So this is why I put in my letter to the president, those people who were pre-existing conditions, for God's sakes, give them a high dose, 50,000 IUs, to really boost them up over two days. 50,000 one day, 50,000 the other day. Now, this, even in the literature, this is well shown. It's not toxic because you're giving them a lot. And when people are under uh, those pre-existing conditions, it really boosts them up. Those of us who are adults, five to 10,000 I use what I take for myself. It's what I put in the letter to the president. And then obviously, you know, those people, children a lot less, and everyone should consult with their doctors. But the levels that I take and what I put in the letter are well-researched numbers. And then in closing, what I want to talk about is a very interesting um, article that came out in uh, not, nothing else than the New York Times. Okay, the New York Times, oops, the New York Times, which always, you know, ha supports big pharma, always uh, wants to make sure that they're supporting the establishment. And given over the last five weeks, I've been hitting very, very hard on this. Even the New York Times a couple weeks ago was forced to admit this, was forced to acknowledge the facts. And this is what they said. By the way, this is the New York Times. Can I boost my immune, immune system? So let's think about that. I never thought the, immune, uh, the New York Times would be talking about boosting the immune system. Where do you think they got that? Again, I take that as a great compliment, but they were never talking about that. It was always pooping, poop poo-pooing stuff, always saying that Trump did the wrong thing, always trying to attack the situation at hand. And here, the New York Times is writing an article about, can I boost my immune system? And obviously, they couch it. Fears about coronavirus have prompted online searches and plenty of misinformation about how to strengthen the immune system. Here's what works and what doesn't. Anyway, uh, let's look at what they finally acknowledge does work. And right here, I want everyone to look at this. Look what they say. Why would vitamin D lower risk for respiratory illness? Our bodies need adequate vitamin D to produce antimicrobial proteins. It's actually peptides. It's okay, we'll let them get away with that, that kill viruses and bacteria. Quote, if you don't have adequate vitamin D circulating, you're less effective at producing these proteins and more susceptible to infection, says Dr. Adit Ginde, professor of emergency medicine at the University of Colorado School of Medicine and, and the and study's lead author. These proteins are particularly active in the respiratory tract. Everyone just look at that. If you don't have adequate vitamin D circulating, you are less effective at producing these proteins and are more susceptible to infection. These proteins are particularly active in the respiratory tract. Now, why is it that with my meager equipment here and this lighting, you know, I've had to do these videos and they're getting out there, but why is it that Fauci, who's been in there for over six presidents, is not advising the president of the United States about this, is not supporting the letter that I sent to the president talking about taking vitamin D? Is it because they're waiting for embarrassment of their fake science? that finally the truth is coming out there, given that no other academic out there will even talk about it, that when we hit hard and then finally people are given the truth, then the New York Times follows. And it's about time we start listening, stop listening, and stop waiting for the mainstream media to tell us what the truth is when you have someone like myself who actually studies this. You don't have to go through some journalist. You can go direct to the source. You can go direct to a scientist like myself who studies this for a living, who's got the degrees. It's time that we start, start, start appreciating people who use their brains and work with their hands, be it the plumber, the electrician, the nurse who are on the front lines. 
and stop listening to journalists. Journalists are scribes. They wait to watch which way the wind blows. By that time, we've lost thousands of lives. That's why in the tweet that I put forward uh, is that if Fauci had advised the president to follow my letter, we could have saved millions of jobs, literally millions of jobs, because people could have been working without fear. And we could have saved the lives of those critically ill with high dose vitamin C. We could have saved the lives of the immunocompromised with high dose vitamin A and D. And we could be protecting ourselves and getting back to work. It is so, so, so disgusting. When I see, when I study the science, I put my hard work into understanding it at the molecular systems level. Many of my colleagues see it. The guys in academia know it, but they shut their mouths because they're afraid of stop, stopping getting their grant funding. And then you have someone like Fauci sitting there in the middle of a crisis, him and Bricks not saying anything. And then you have a lot of really stupid people on the internet, a lot of grifters who watch which way the wind blows. Some of them are hooked on to Bill Gates. They want to kiss up to him. They think he's a smart guy. You know, they've been bamboozled. The guy has no degrees in the biological sciences, has not studied this. But again, I want to share with you here that the New York Times is forced to admit this now. If you don't have adequate vitamin D, you are less effective at producing these proteins. These proteins are particularly active in the respiratory tract. That's what we're talking about. And if you go back to the diagram I shared, those proteins are the catholicidins. And here they are for everyone to understand, you know, and here's the science. There are these beautiful little proteins that when you take them, they go bust up the cell walls, the cell membranes of bacteria and viruses. Boom, boom. That's what they do. That's what's going on here. And it's time that we stop listening and waiting for these grifters who watch which way the wind blows. You know, you gotta really start wondering about these people on the internet with the kind of content they put out there, what are their qualifications in terms of are they doing the scientific work, the engineering work, etc. And then you have to also start wondering about the academics who've been staying quiet and definitely we need to admonish people like Fauci. And just to give you an update, as many of you know, I'm running for US Senate. It's important everyone, you know, really recognize that in 2020 we have a big opportunity to really um, win truth, freedom, and health. As everyone knows, as I always end these talks, it, it would be remiss of me if I didn't share with you that I am running for U.S. Senate in Massachusetts here. And by the way, Massachusetts is supposed to be the, the mecca of medicine, okay? It's supposed to be the mecca of medicine. We're thinking of doing a massive May Day protest at Harvard Medical School. Harvard Medical School is the epicenter of medicine, supposedly. And that medical school, unfortunately, takes advantage of its medical school students. It's big pharma medicine. They don't even get courses in nutrition. It's like, if this, give this drug. If this, give this medical intervention. We're really thinking about working people marching on Harvard Medical School to really show that the entire healthcare system start, starts with medical school education, which we don't give these unfortunate MDs. They get a big ego when they come out of a place like Harvard MD, but they frankly don't know a lot about something like what a Catholic seed is. So we're thinking about that. We'll keep you posted on that. But going back, you know, I'm running for U.S. Senate. As you know, the entire campaign is for truth, freedom, and health, as you remember. And when people donate to our campaign, which everyone should um, think about doing, uh, you can also be a volunteer. You don't have to. Uh, donate if you can't. But one of the things that I've done here, as many people know, is those people who support the campaign, we've done something very uh, valuable to also help you understand how the body is a system. Let me go back over here. Um, uh, right here, anyone who donates to the campaign, we give you a book called System and Revolution. Uh, this is for people who do donate 25 or more. And you get access to this very powerful tool called Your Body, Your System, which I built that teaches you how your body is a system. Now, if you can't donate this, one of the things we've done, noticing it's there's an economic hardship right now going on, donate whatever you can, five or ten dollars. And if you can't afford that, simply email me vashiva at vashiva.com or go to my personal website and tell me um, there's a checkoff box I'll show you there if you go to vashiva.com. Um, we built a new form that if you go there, you can literally say, I need a scholarship and I will uh, give you a scholarship. Obviously, it's on the honor system, but if you go right here onto the website and if you go to contact, 
right here. Um, you can say, hey, look, help me give a scholarship. There you go, scholarship for your body or system. And anyone who fills that out, you will get a free scholarship for it. Obviously, if you can support yourself and do it, please do that because it goes to our campaign. But again, this is based on the honor system. Okay, the other thing people need to also recognize is that we need to get on the ballot. We're very, you know, our volunteers have been out there doing amazing work. It looks like we're very, very close. Um, and to get on the ballot, if you know anyone in Massachusetts, you're in Massachusetts or you know someone, simply tell them to go here and click on the signature link and all they need to do is fill out this form and one of the things we'll do is we'll literally ship them out a packet with the nomination paper to their home and all they do is fill it out, submit it to us, we give them all the postage so we can get on the ballot. Again, in closing, the important, and by the way, one of the important things I also have to report is we have some very good news. Um, the very good news is that we've gotten close to, I think, 80,000 signatures. It would be really good this week to get 100,000 signatures to fire Fauci. And we've been hosting the web form. We built the technology on our website because change.org takes it down. Different organizations are ripping down some of these petitions. So we built it on our own because we don't want to rely on any of these other people. So if you go here, right here to the website, Shiva for Senate, and you sort of scroll down here, you can see all my little uh, other stuff on the website. But if you go all the way to the bottom here, you'll see Fire Fauci, there he is. Fire Mr. Fauci, as you remember, he is you know completely embedded with all these different organizations. The Clinton Foundation, he loves Hillary Clinton, he loves Big Pharma, he works with the CDC, works with Tedros of the World Health Organization. You know, NIH has given money over to uh, China Wuhan lab, lab, he works with the Gates Foundation, and him and Zuckerberg are buddies. So what you see here is if you go here um, to the Fire Fauci petition, we give you a quick update here, it's loading up here. While that's doing that, I can show you down here. You can see here was a letter that we sent and we're close to 79,231 and these are people. So we refresh this each day for speed, but it's, uh, last I heard it's a little bit over 80,000. So there you go, I hope that was valuable. Um, let me just see what we got going on here if you wanna take any questions from people, change.org is owned by Gates. What do you expect? Exactly, Bill Gates has no medicine. medicine. Uh, he's creepy old something. Okay, one of the things I want, I want everyone to also remember is that if we're gonna attack Bill Gates, let's be very clear, we also need to attack Hillary Clinton. Let's not forget her. Gates and Hillary Clinton work hand in hand together. They work, they're both pro-vaccine. They both want mandated vaccines. They both want to vaccinate everyone. My position is it's not a pro-vax or anti-vax argument. It's about medical freedom, that each one of us should have the rights to decide what's right for us in consultation with our healthcare provider. But what Gates wants is he wants to mandate va vaccines. And remember, this is a part of his larger um, way he looks at the world. He looks at the world from an operating system standpoint. And I'll be doing a talk on this tomorrow, but he looks at the world from a world of operating systems, which means the way that he monopolized with Microsoft was he owned the operating system of the computer called DOS, DOS. And that's how he monopolized all the applications above it. And I'll, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Now, when he views us, he wants to own our operating system. And what is our operating system? The immune system. So Gates says, big plan. And by the way, this is not something that is not ill-planned. He brought in some of the smartest guys from McKinsey. He set up the Global Vaccine Alliance with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, Bill Gates. So if you see people attacking Bill Gates and they don't attack Hillary Clinton like Bobby Kennedy, suspect. Suspect. Look, it's easy to attack Bill Gates and get all, yes, 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 we... We don't like Bill Gates, but remember, they're one all big, one incestuous family. So if someone attacks Gates and does not attack Clinton, they're part of the not so obvious establishment. Okay, that's what's going on. So Gates, Hillary Clinton, Gates, Hillary Clinton, and their goal is to own our immune system. They're really the fronts people for the trillion dollar pharma industry that's failing. We'll go through that in detail tomorrow. But what the most important thing we need to take away today is that we are now starting to see that the mainstream media with the vitamin C, IV dosage, high dosage C, as well as with vitamin D, uh, does work. And in order to maintain their credibility, remember, there's still fake news, 
in order to maintain their fakeness, <laughs> they're, they're in an ironic way having to acknowledge what I've been sharing with you. So this is a good thing, right? Because at least it's going to reach more people, but it, it's coming from our bottoms up pressure. They're not doing it on their own. Let me look at what's going on YouTube. Any questions here? Um, learn your knowledge. Okay. People are coming there. Good. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I forgot to go live on YouTube. I always keep doing this. Um, to everyone on YouTube who I um, did not do, I will be putting up this video very, very shortly. I always forget to do this. I forget to go live. I'll be putting this up very shortly back up on YouTube. Sorry about that. I don't know why I do that. If someone did notice that, I should have seen you seen that. But I'm trying to run sort of four different things here. I'll be putting it up live shortly. Anyway, if there's any, if there's no other questions, thank you everyone. But tomorrow I will be doing a thing on the operating system, on the operating system of how Gates works and how we want to monopolize our operating system. But anyway, I hope this was valuable. I wish you all well. Thank you. Good night.